The semi-analytic planetary theory VSOP French, variations seculaires des orbites planétaires is a concept describing long-term changes secular variation in the orbits of the planets Mercury to Neptune. If one ignores the gravitational attraction between the planets and only models the attraction between the Sun and the planets, then with some further idealizations, the resulting orbits would be Keplerian ellipses. In this idealized model, the shape and orientation of these ellipses would be constant in time. In reality, while the planets are at all times roughly in Keplerian orbits, the shape and orientation of these ellipses do change slowly over time. Over the centuries increasingly complex models have been made of the deviations from simple Keplerian orbits. In addition to the models, efficient and accurate numerical approximation methods have also been developed. VSOP was developed and is maintained updating it with the results of the latest and most accurate measurements by the scientists at the Bureau des Longitudes in Paris, France. The first version, VSOP-82, computed only the orbital elements at any moment. An updated version, VSOP-87, besides providing improved accuracy, computed the positions of the planets directly, as well as their orbital elements, at any moment. At present, the difference between computational predictions and observations is sufficiently small that the observations do not support the hypothesis that the models are missing some fundamental physics. Such hypothetical deviations are often referred to as post-Keplerian effects. Topic. History Predicting the position of the planets in the sky was already performed in ancient times. Careful observations and geometrical calculations produced a model of the motion of the solar system known as the Ptolemaic system, which was based on an Earth-centered system. The parameters of this theory were improved during the Middle Ages by Indian and Islamic astronomers. The work of Tycho Brahe, Kepler, and Isaac Newton in early modern Europe laid a foundation for a modern heliocentric system. Future planetary positions continued to be predicted by extrapolating past observed positions as late as the 1740 tables of Jacques Cassini. The problem is that, for example, the Earth is not only gravitationally attracted by the Sun, which would result in a stable and easily predicted elliptical orbit, but also in varying degrees by the Moon, the other planets and any other object in the solar system. These forces cause perturbations to the orbit, which change over time and which cannot be exactly calculated. They can be approximated, but to do that in some manageable way requires advanced mathematics or very powerful computers. It is customary to develop them into periodic series which are a function of time, e.g. A plus Bt plus Ct2 plus times cos p plus qt plus rt 2 plus and so forth one for each planetary interaction. The factor a in the preceding formula is the main amplitude, the factor q the main period, which is directly related to a harmonic of the driving force, that is a planetary position. For example, q equals 3 times length of Mars plus 2 times length of Jupiter. The term length in this context refers to the ecliptic longitude, that is the angle over which the planet has progressed in its orbit, so q is an angle over time too. The time needed for the length to increase over 360 degrees is equal to the revolution period. It was Joseph Louis Lagrange in 1781, who carried out the first serious calculations, approximating the solution using a linearization method. Others followed, but it was not until 1897 that George William Hill expanded on the theories by taking second-order terms into account. 
Third order terms had to wait until the 1970s when computers became available and the vast amounts of calculations to be performed in developing a theory finally became manageable. Topic: <laughs> Variations seculaires des orbites planétaires. Topic VSOP eighty two Pierre Britannion completed a first phase of this work by nineteen eighty two and the results of it are known as VSOP eighty two. But because of the long period variations, his results are expected not to last more than a million years and much less, maybe one thousand years only on very high accuracy. A major problem in any theory is that the amplitudes of the perturbations are a function of the masses of the planets and other factors, but the masses are the bottlenecks. These masses can be determined by observing the periods of the moons of each planet or by observing the gravitational deflection of spacecraft passing near a planet. More observations produce greater accuracy. Short period perturbations less than a few years can be quite easily and accurately determined. But long period perturbations periods of many years up to centuries are much more difficult, because the time span over which accurate measurements exist is not long enough, which may make them almost indistinguishable from constant terms. Yet it is these terms which are the most important influence over the millennia. Notorious examples are the Great Venus Term and the Jupiter-Saturn Great Inequality. Looking up the revolution periods of these planets, one may notice that 8 times period of Earth is almost equal to 13 times period of Venus and 5 times period of Jupiter is about 2 times period of Saturn. A practical problem with the VSOP-82 was that since it provided long series only for the orbital elements of the planets, it was not easy to figure out where to truncate the series if full accuracy was not needed. This problem was fixed in VSOP-87, which provides series for the positions as well as for the orbital elements of the planets. VSOP-87 In VSOP-87 especially these long period terms were addressed, resulting in much higher accuracy, although the calculation method itself remained similar. VSOP-87 guarantees for Mercury, Venus, Earth-Moon barycenter and Mars a precision of 1 inch for 4,000 years before and after the 2000 epoch. The same precision is ensured for Jupiter and Saturn over 2,000 years and for Uranus and Neptune over 6,000 years before and after J2000. This, together with its free availability has made VSOP-87 the most popular source for planetary calculations nowadays, for example, it is used in Celestia and Orbiter. Another major improvement is the use of rectangular coordinates in addition to the elliptical. In traditional perturbation theory it is customary to write the base orbits for the planets down with the following six orbital elements gravity yields second-order differential equations which result in two integration constants, and there is one such equation for each direction in three-dimensional space. A semi-major axis E eccentricity, I inclination, Omega longitude of the ascending node, Omega argument of perihelion or longitude of perihelion p equals Omega plus Omega, T time of perihelion passage or mean anomaly m without perturbations these elements would be constant and are therefore ideal to base the theories on. With perturbations they slowly change, and one takes as many perturbations in the calculations as possible or desirable. 
the results are the orbital element at a specific time, which can be used to compute the position in either rectangular coordinates x, y, z or spherical coordinates, longitude, latitude and heliocentric distance. These heliocentric coordinates can then fairly easily be changed to other viewpoints, e.g. geocentric coordinates. For coordinate transformations, rectangular coordinates x, y, z are often easier to use. Translations e.g. heliocentric to geocentric coordinates are performed through vector addition and rotations e.g. ecliptic to equatorial coordinates through matrix multiplication. VSOP87 comes in 6 tables. VSOP87 heliocentric ecliptic orbital elements for the equinox J2000.0, the six orbital elements, ideal to get an idea of how the orbits are changing over time. VSOP87A heliocentric ecliptic rectangular coordinates for the equinox J2000.0, the most useful when converting to geocentric positions and later plot the position on a star chart. VSOP87B Heliocentric Ecliptic Spherical Coordinates for the Equinox J2000.0 VSOP87C Heliocentric Ecliptic Rectangular Coordinates for the Equinox of the Day, the most useful when converting to geocentric positions and later compute e.g. rise, set, culmination times, or the altitude and azimuth relative to your local horizon. VSOP87D Heliocentric Ecliptic Spherical Coordinates for the Equinox of the Day VSOP87E Barycentric Ecliptic Rectangular Coordinates for the Equinox J2000.0, relative to the barycenter of the Solar System, the VSOP87 tables are publicly available and can be retrieved from Vizier. Topic. VSOP 2000 VSOP 2000 has an accuracy that is a factor of 10 to 100 better than its predecessors. The uncertainty for Mercury, Venus and the Earth is reported to be around 0.1 Moss for the interval 1900 to 2000, and that for the other planets a few milliarcseconds. Both the publication of and the data for VSOP 2000 do not seem to be publicly available. Topic. VSOP 2002 Britannian's last work was on the implementation of relativistic effects, which was supposed to improve the accuracy with another factor of 10. This version was never finished, and still had weaknesses for Uranus and Neptune. VSOP-2010 The VSOP-2010 files contain the series of the elliptic elements for the eight planets Mercury, Venus, Earth-Moon Barycenter, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune and for the dwarf planet Pluto of the solution VSOP-2010. The planetary solution VSOP-2010 is fitted to the numerical integration DE405 over the time interval plus 1890 plus 2000, numerical precision 10 times better than VSOP-82. Over a greater interval minus 4000, Plus 8000 A comparison with an internal numerical allows to say that the solutions VSOP 2010 are about five times better than VSOP 2000 for the telluric planets and 10 to 50 times better for the outer planets. Topic. VSOP 2013 
The VSOP 2013 files contain the series of the elliptic elements for the eight planets Mercury, Venus, Earth Moon Barycenter, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and for the dwarf planet Pluto of the solution VSOP 2013. The planetary solution VSOP 2013 is fitted to the numerical integration INPOP 10A built at IMCCE, Paris Observatory over the time interval plus 1890 plus 2000. The precision is of a few 0.1 for the telluric planets, 1.6 for Mars over the time interval minus 4000 plus 8000. Topic. Theory of the outer planets This is an analytical solution for the spherical and rectangular positions rather than orbital elements of the four planets Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune and for the dwarf planet Pluto. Topic TOP two oh one O This solution is fitted to the ephemeris DE four hundred five over the time interval plus one eight nine O plus two O O the reference system in the solution TOP2010 is defined by the dynamical equinox and ecliptic J two thousand point zero Topic TOP two oh one three. This solution is fitted to the numerical integration INPOP ten A built at IMCCE Paris Observatory over the time interval plus one eight nine O plus two O O. The reference system in the solution TOP 2013 is defined by the dynamical equinox and ecliptic of J2000.0.The TOP 2013 solution is the best for the motion over the time interval minus 4000 plus 8000. Its precision is of a few 0.1 for the four planets, i.e. a gain of a factor between 1.5 and 15, depending on the planet, compared to VSOP 2013. The precision of the theory of Pluto remains valid up to the time span from 0 to plus 4000. Topic. See also. Secular phenomena Shapiro delay Jet Propulsion Laboratory Development Ephemeris JPL ELP 2000 Newcomb's Tables of the Sun Notes and References <laughs>